All right, so I'd like to do a problem uh, with projectile motion using calculus to help us determine some things about a projectile that has been shot from some point. All right, so let's, let's set up this problem. I've got this little tower here, this little square, and it, it has a height of 20 meters. All right, so it's 20 meters tall. I got my little building here, and on the top there's a little uh, little cannon sticking out. Okay, and a hundred, I am shooting an object out of this cannon, and I'm shooting it toward a target, and this target is 100 meters away. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send my object in this direction and I want to know how close this object's going to come to hitting this target. So let's get some more information that will help us out here in uh, figuring out what we need to do. Well, we know that this is a hundred meters. We know that it's twenty meters high, the thing that I'm shooting this projectile from. Well, I'm going to say that we're shooting uh, it 30 degrees, at an angle of 30 degrees. So this angle right here is 30 degrees also known as, if we can write 30 degrees in here, but 30 degrees we can much more easily evaluate it if we convert those degrees to radians and say this is pi over 6. Okay, so that's the angle at which we are shooting this projectile is pi over 6. Okay, cool. What else can we know? Well, well, I'll tell you how fast it's going. I'm shooting it out, and I'm shooting it at 20 meters per second. That's how fast it's going to be shot in this direction. And let's say we're on a planet where acceleration due to gravity, well, we're on our planet, but we're in a part, with some, we're in a part of the planet with some extremely dense bedrock. So we're normally, uh, it's negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, for acceler for A of T, or our uh, acceleration over time. In this part of the planet, gravity is such to where our A of T is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. So this is going to be uh, a little bit easier for us, a little bit more friendly. So we, ha we have our A of T. We understand that this is our acceleration due to gravity. All right, now, how close are we going to become to hitting this target 100 feet away? Well, this is all of the information that I can, I can give you right now. So I want to see if we can figure it out from just this information. And it turns out we can. So what do we need to do first? Well, let's get started. I think a great thing, I think a great thing for us to do would be to make a triangle. Now, using trig is going to be the only easy way to figure out what we need to do here. So let's go ahead and construct a triangle. And straight up here. And, eh. Okay, close enough. So we've got ourselves a triangle. Now, what can we do with this triangle? Well, we, we are, what do we know about this triangle? Well, we, we know this angle right here is pi over 6. So that's good. And we know our acceleration in this direction right here on our hypotenuse is 20 meters a second, right? So this is this is useful for us. So we've got our, our acceleration in this direction. We've got our angle at which everything's being shot. So what's this right here? And what's this? Well, the math to figure this out is really not that difficult at all. Well, we know that, I'm sorry, I have erased part of this triangle here. We know that this uh, Sokotoa rule, right, for some basic trig, which says, let's rewrite it up here, S-O-H, C-A-H, and uh, green, T-O-A, huh? Darker green would be better. So SOH, CAH, 
T-O-A, Sokotoa, right? So this rule is helpful for us figuring out uh, the other sides of the triangle. Well, which, what do we need to use here? Do we need to use sine, cosine? What do we need to do? Well, look look at the direction where we're shooting this in. We need to use sine. So we've got Sokotoa here telling us that we need to use sine, so we need to look uh, at sine and cosine. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just sine right now. So we can say that sine of pi over 6 is the same as opposite over hypotenuse, and we know our hypotenuse is just 20, so opposite over 20. Pi over 6, there we go, that looks a lot better. So we have this sine over pi over 6 is opposite over 20, so that means that opposite is equal to 20 sine pi over 6, just moving things from one side to the other. So, well, what's sine of pi over 6? Well, let's go over here and have a little aside. We know that sine of pi over 6, this is where it's good to know our, your unit circle, it's just 1 half. So if sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, then opposite is equal to, and I know this looks like 0, so we'll, we'll put a little p in there. Opposite is equal to, I'm sorry, p. Opposite is equal to 20 times 1 half, so opposite is just equal to 10. Now, 10 what? 10 meters a second. So here is our opposite side, so we can go ahead and write, and well, let's use blue ink because that's what we did for all these others. Our opposite is just 10 meters per second. So great. Now, <clears throat> we need our adjacent side, which we can arrive at pretty easily, and let's box all this in so we know what uh, what pieces are attached to our triangle. We can arrive at our adjacent side simply by saying A, ah, black marker, black, all right, A equals, and we're just using Pythagorean theorem here, 20 cosine pi over 6. Well, what's that? Well, that is rad 10. It's 10 to, uh, times rad 3. So we know that this side is 10 times rad 3. That's our A. So, look at that. We figured out all sides of our triangle. We don't need all of them right now, but it's good for later. So this is, this is excellent. We figured out everything we need to know for right now. Now, let's, uh, let's go on to another page and look at our next step. So, let's, let's write some things down that we know. We know we have an upward initial velocity. Of 10 meters per second. How do we know this? Well... Upward, in this case, is this is our upward velocity. This is our velocity in this direction. So our upward velocity is just 10 meters per second. So, <clears throat> But acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Let me write that just a little bit better. <laughs> Negative 10 meters per second squared. So acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Is 10 meters per second. Okay, so we have these two pieces of information, so I think it's high time we took an integral, which is going to, uh, was going to tell us some things. So our velocity, we just, this is not something I'm coming up with that you should know. This is just the, a formula that you're going to be given. So I'm giving it to you right here. We're, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that your velocity is equal to the indefinite integral of 
A evaluated uh, at D with, with respect to T, so the, the integral of A dt. So in that case, we can just start filling in some values here. That's going to be the antiderivative or indefinite integral of negative 10 dt, which is going to be, uh, let's see, negative 10t plus c, right? Because this is this is the end of our, this this integral right here. Great. So we have negative 10t plus c. So now we can say what's our v of t? Well, our v of t is just 10 minus 10t. And we're also going to need to know our v of zero here. So our v of zero. Which is which is which is important because we want to know you know when it hits the ground we want to know how close it's going to be. So our v of zero is just going to be plugging in things again here. Ten, which is uh, ten equal to negative ten times zero plus c, right? Negative ten times zero plus c. So this is really just c. Negative ten times zero. We don't care about any of that. So. We have C here, and we're going to have, for our V of T, we got the, okay, 10 minus 10 T, great. So, uh, now we need to figure out S of T equal to 0. So, let's go ahead and figure out our position uh, integral, which is going to be important. So, position here is given by S, because if S of T is 0, then the object, the object just hit the ground. So, our integral that I'm going to give you for this is that S or position, is equal to the integral, the indefinite integral, antiderivative of v dt. So in this case, that will be equal to, let's see, 10 minus 10 t dt. 10 minus 10 t dt, which is going to be equal to 10 t minus 5 t squared. Now, I'm taking these integrals really quickly in my head, skipping a ton of steps. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with integrals or how, how these things work or uh, how, to, how to go ahead and take integrals like this without doing a bunch of uh, extra work, go ahead and check out my other videos on taking integrals, and that will explain how I'm doing all of this because otherwise this will probably be pretty confusing. Um, so, all right. So 5t squared plus c. So now that we have this, we can say that s of 0, s evaluated at 0, is going to be 20, so that would be equal to uh, 10 times 0 minus 5 times 0 squared plus c equals 20. So that we have that, that means that t, it's going to be, um, now let's just, okay, so let's go ahead and start plugging in values, I guess would be the best, next best step for us. So we can say 20 plus 10t, looks like 16, doesn't it? Plus 10t minus 5t squared equals 0. So t squared minus 2t minus 4 equals 0. So now let's complete the square and say that t squared minus 2t plus 1 equals 4 plus 1. So come up here and that will give us that t minus 1 squared equals 5. And we can try to factor this, and it's not going to work because we already did that, so we completed the square. Okay, so now that's going to give us just t equal to 1 plus or minus rad 5. We reject the negative because that's going to be less than 0, and we can't land at less than 0. So our answer here is going to be t equals 1 plus 
radical 5. So this is, this is great. This is a very important for us that we have this information. So now we know what t equals. So now let's go in if at t equals we can say these things about. And remember what we're looking at here. We're trying to figure out how close we get. You know, where are we going to land here or here? How close to this uh, desired point are we going to end up uh, being when we finally get done with our problem? So uh, let's go back. All right. So if we have t is 1 plus rad 5, then we can say at t equals 1 plus erase that. There we go. At t equals 1 plus rad 5. What is the horizontal position? S, right? So we can say VH here equals to 10 rad 3. So our SH is going to be the integral of VH. Okay, and I'm just, I'll provide that for you. So that means that SH of T is equal to 10 times rad 3 times T, which is just going to be 10 rad 3 times 1 plus 5, which is going to be equal to, let's see, 10 rad 3 plus 10 rad 15, and we need a decimal approximation here, so that's going to be around 56. So 56 meters, we have to, you know, be sure that we put in our unit once we're done. 56 meters. So, let's see here. This is a terrible, terrible cannon. We definitely know we need to fire the people who are... Uh, who we have hired for ballistics because look at what happened. We are trying to hit a target a hundred meters away and these morons and cretins have only managed to lob this thing a pathetic measly 56 meters. So this is definitely very, very bad. So, uh, yeah, bad, bad people uh, hired to do our calculus. All right, so that's, uh, there's quite a lot of steps in there, quite a lot of room for error, but this is, uh, I say uh, cautiously here, all there is to it. Uh, uh, don't be freaked out by all this VH, S of H, all this would be provided for you anyway. I'm just providing these things for you. Uh, all you all you really be required to do in this type of problem is, is understand how to compute things within these integrals and figure out what you need. And of course, the trig to uh, figure out each side of your triangle is incredibly important. You notice that I was just pull, sticking 10 rad 3 over here, you know, kind of out of nothing, but you have to remember where that came from. That came from right here, where we have 10 rad 3 as... Uh, the uh, the A on our triangle. So, all right, we're done. And we've got a final answer of 56 meters. So it's a terrible cannon with really, really uh, incompetent people operating it.